Hey everybody, I hope everyone is doing well out there. As many of you know, I am holed up here in the Arizona desert. I actually have a couple families next to me. You'll be hearing from them soon. The point of this video is to show you my setup here in my school bus conversion and interview uh, members of each family to get insights from them. We are actually very, very lucky to have these rigs to go out in the middle of nowhere, be self-quarantined. We have the water supply that we need. We have our power coming from the sun. Uh, we're all very well stocked up on food. But I wanna show you the systems that I've implemented in this bus. Also, just give you some insights to how our lives have, have been affected out here. Really, you know, it's, it's, it's odd to look on the phone and look on the computer and see everything else that's happening because out here, we are completely insulated from everything. Many of those people out there that are watching this that have seen my videos for years and years, uh, when I got my first camper van, one of the first videos I posted with that camper van was my bug out bag. Uh, for those who don't know, a bug out bag is a bag you take uh, in case, the worst case scenario, you're on foot, you have all the essentials. I've been of the prepping mindset for many, many years and when it comes down to it, uh, this bus is an iteration of that. And for the things that I implement into this bus, the my prepping mindset, friends that have made fun of me over the years are now calling me to see if it's possible to come out to the desert and stay with me. And that's that's not hyperbole. That's that's happened multiple times now where I've got those phone calls. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, without any further ado, we're gonna go over a couple of the systems in my bus which is very similar to the other buses. And then we'll finish up this video with some uh, Q and A with some other people that are out here and how this has affected their lives. So the first thing I wanna share with you is my Berkey water filter. Uh, this has been fantastic for me. This is the three and a half gallon version. You can use creek water, river water. It'll filter out all the bad, leave you with good drinkable water. And what I'll show you next is actually underneath the filter. So what I have under here is a five cubic feet chest freezer. Right now it is fairly well stocked just with frozen goods. I originally implemented this into the bus as a way to store fish. I spent five summers up in Alaska. Uh, I do a lot of salmon fishing, halibut fishing, rockfish fishing. I also built this bus to be out in the middle of nowhere. So say if I go to BLM land and park for a month, I can go to buy Costco, fill this thing up, even before all the craziness that runs in the stores, this was three quarters of the way full. What you see on top here was the last things that I did get from uh, the store when I prepped to come out here to our spot in Arizona. This chest freezer has been fantastic. It hardly takes any power. Once I put the butcher block back on, it's not noticeable. Then I have counter space for cooking. And also I put the filter up there as you saw before. So this area right here is my office. I do work from my bus full time. We have uh, team members for one of my YouTube channels, Tiny Home Tours, out there filming full time, manage everything from here. Everything that you see that's powered on is obviously powered by solar and battery power. We'll get to that later. But this is basically my command station. Uh, just wake up, get to work, and then the rest of the day I'm free to do about anything I want so I don't get blown away by the wind. Moving. Further back, residential fridge. Got this thing stocked, good to go, as well as the freezer down below. I will admit, this is my biggest power draw. However, again, the original purpose of this bus was to go out in the middle of nowhere, camp, not need any goods, go to Costco, stock up $300, and that's my groceries for a month, month and a half. Again, it is fairly big for a school bus, but in this situation, I am very, very happy that I have this residential fridge. Rounding out the kitchen area, large sink, as well as a vintage stove, runs on propane, hardly uses any propane. I currently have two propane bottles. They're pretty much completely full right now. Uh, one bottle, just using this stove and oven, will last a month and a half to two months, and that's cooking every single day, two meals a day, and I have two of those bottles. So. Fridge is right here, moving further back. 
dry food storage, canned goods, tuna, all of that stuff, chips up top, as well as the bottom here. Pantry is fully stocked. What I wanted to show you here was actually my Dickinson Marine Diesel Heater. Uh, this is ran off of diesel being that we're in Arizona right now. Don't really need this, but the reason why I mentioned this is we are currently parked on public land uh, with all the RV parks, with all the state parks closing. We don't know what our future is going to be. So if I do have to move north um, sooner than later, say Flagstaff, Arizona, it's snowing up there right now. This uses 1.3 gallons per 24 hours on low. And being that my bus is insulated well with spray foam insulation, this will maintain about a 70 degree uh, range within the bus on low. And I have a five gallon diesel uh, container that I carry around with me. So worst case scenario, I'll be able to last about five days with this thing on nonstop. And very worst case scenario, the bus itself is diesel. I can tap into that 100 gallon diesel tank to be able to power this little heater. So moving into the bathroom, just touch on this real quick. This is a nature's head composting toilet. Uh, number one, you can store and dump outside or you can take it to the dump station here where we're at. Number two, get stored in there and then it's a composting toilet so you're able to throw away the number twos. This is very crucial for our setup right now. Don't have to go to dump stations allows you to be off the grid much longer and also this type of toilet does not require any water to use so you're saving a ton of water uh, being that I do have a fairly large water holding capacity in this bus which I'll show you in a little bit uh, you know it just helps me be able to stay out here without having to go into town or fill anything up so right now you are currently in my bedroom I did want to show you this display right here this is my sea level tank monitor. So this lets me know how much fresh water I have. When I got to Arizona in November, I filled up my fresh water before I left. I did not fill up again until January. And that was showering, that was using the water through the Berkey filter. Uh, and that was just using it, not even really worrying about it. Where if need be, be able to fill up the 200 gallons of fresh water and it would last me a very, very long time part of this lifestyle one of the things that you realize is how much water you use so before living this lifestyle i would go to a restaurant and just leave the water running as i was washing my hands with this lifestyle you're responsible for every drop coming in and out of the rig so you're much more conscious so i really don't use that much water just naturally now living this lifestyle but if need be you know cut down the showers to once a week and you know just use the water for drinking water washing dishes just using more paper plates you know so there's different ways that you can elongate this amount of water but for me having 200 gallons in this mobile rig where i'm able to travel and go where i want to is literally game changing like i absolutely love it so another readout that i want to show you is this color display uh, this is the readout to the battery capacity and the solar that I have. Up top, I have 1700 watts of solar. Uh, in the bus itself, I have 900 amp hours of lithium batteries, which essentially means if I wanted to cut back on the power, I could go two or three days without needing any sun. But here in Arizona, there's tons of solar. Earlier today, I was bringing in 1200 watts you know, of solar, which will boost these batteries up fairly quick. We had a uh, couple cloudy days and it's a little cloudy right now. So the batteries are at 60%. But if, you know, later in the afternoon, right now it's about 1 p.m., you know, from two to three, if it clears up and I get straight solar, I'll probably be up to about 80% by the end of the day. So that's just a quick overview of my off the grid systems. The systems that when I was building this bus, I'd have no idea I'd be in this situation now where I just feel so incredibly fortunate and lucky to have this rig you know at any second's notice we can head out we can go to a different spot again just checking the news every day to see if public lands are going to be shut down but I mean just this area around here there's so many people that are self-quarantining they are self-sufficient and man if the government shut that down there's going to be a lot of people out here with probably not any backup plans 
I formed some of my backup plans, like I said, up north to Flagstaff, uh, maybe even back home to the Midwest where I'm from. Uh, so just waiting to see what happens with that. But now that you've seen everything that I'm doing, I kind of wanted to open this up to other families and share what they're up to, some of the hardships and things that they're doing to prepare. How has this whole thing affected you guys, if any? Um, geez, has this affected us being in the bus? Not unless we check in on society. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's just like another day out here besides, you know, when we go to get supplies or something and, you know, shelves have been ravaged and so there's just nothing there. Ravage is not the right word. Yeah. Yeah. Um that that's the only instance where where it really seems different like i work online that hasn't really changed for me because i work with the same set of customers um so no it really hasn't changed besides you know supplies that kind of thing concern for that stuff if people get real stupid and start causing issues and hoarding things but other than that it's just been no oh, we're gonna have to go to the store again because we didn't have eggs last time we were there yeah I mean, honestly, it hasn't really affected us at all, I don't think. Like he, like he said, he works online. Um, we already homeschool. We're off-grid. We already try to stock up on supplies anyway because, yeah. you know, we try not to run to the store every day or, um, you know, run to the store after work or whatever. So that in that, in like day-to-day -day life, it's all just cookies and cream here it's not been anything different <laughs> so when when it comes to that like what what is your biggest concern out here because i just mentioned for me it's them shutting down public lands even though i don't see how to be implemented we went through that but like do you have any concerns out here do you have backup plans to to move elsewhere and the thing is like if you don't want to answer any of this stuff that's totally fine too i don't know if it's like you know no. private no. stuff um, no our, I mean, I think our concerns with being out here are the same concerns that everybody else has that are, you know, in stick and bricks. Like, are they going to start locking things down as far as travel goes and highway travel, state lands, you know, that kind of thing. Same as when people in cities, are they going to start limiting travel and, you know, quarantine hours, that kind of thing. Um, we we kind of do have contingency plans, but nothing that's like rock solid, like this is what we do, this is where we go. It's all kind of a see what happens sort of thing. I mean, Arizona has a ton of land available. We also have family here, so that makes a big difference. Like we can just drive and go park with someone if we need to. Um, initially, our plans have changed a little bit because we were going to try and wander and then you know, we start heading north usually this time of year and start wandering out. Uh, right now, we're gonna we're gonna hang tight and just kind of feel it out and see what happens. Versus venturing, we're in a a safe area that's comfortable. So we'll just hang out and see what happens. Versus wandering and trying to travel and running across whatever happens elsewhere. I think my biggest concern is. I don't know, the unrest of society, like first couple of weeks, people are kind of limiting them going out and, you know, they're not going to work and they're keeping their kids home and everybody seems to be pulling together pretty well right now. Yeah, everybody's but on board vacation right now. given, you know, if it were to last another month or, you know, that, that type of thing, I think, I think the unrest of society would be a little concerning, just people, you know, acting out and... Yeah. you know rioting or something like that you know yeah, on, we don't want to be anyway. anywhere near anything like that yeah me anyway i'm only concerned with what other people do like i'm not really concerned for us or our setup or our supplies or anything like that it's all about how society handles it because unfortunately the masses are pretty dumb i mean that's just what it comes down to people don't people don't think ahead people don't people don't think ahead and they'll soak in whatever media is trying to push that day and that's just not the best way to operate your life i don't think so on the flip side of that what positives are you seeing come from this if any Ooh, me, me. Me. Tons. <laughs> so many positive things i'm feeling actually really optimistic more so than any worry or fear but people you know are learning that they can do their jobs from home they're learning how to 
meal plan and, and cook the food that they already have. They're learning to spend time with their kids and I'm really hoping that people maybe figure out how to live with less so that they can continue living this way when all of this is said and done. I also have loved social media and all of the funny stuff that people have come up with and you know cheering each other on and how um, people are really putting the safety of our elders into consideration rather than themselves I think is really great. I mean other than the toilet paper supply shortage I think that all of it thus far has been amazing. Well yeah and, and you know companies retooling to make you know medical supplies and stuff that are needed you know just everybody's I mean the U.S. hasn't come together like this since 9-11. Mm -hmm. And so to see everybody, I mean, we're all in this together. We're all, you know, have to take care of each other. So to see, you know, huge corporations and, you know, down to people just in neighborhoods trying to help other people out is amazing. It's not something that would normally happen. It's something that we see in our circles of, you know, friends and fellow travelers and stuff all the time. But yeah. to see to see everybody coming together in other communities throughout the nation is freaking awesome. It's almost like if we don't have a common enemy to fight, we fight against ourselves. Like Cubans have to have something to fight against. There's something for. Yeah. And if there's nothing out there, then we're just in our hamster yeah. wheel mm -hmm. spinning. Yeah, and that's that's one that's one big big point of this whole issue is that it's really hard to divide people when everybody's in the same boat, which is great. Mm -hmm. like, people don't need to be divided. Yeah. So we are preparing a really funny skit about COVID-19. And if you want to check it out, we're Bricks of Happiness on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. And TikTok, kind of. <laughs> He's more TikTok. <laughs> She's TikTok.